Hello, I'm Rahul from the Fun Robotics Summer, and in this video, we're going to be breaking down the first regional championship match of Decode this season, the Australian Nationals. In particular, we're going to be breaking down how defense is starting to occur in the far zone shooting, how shooters have become so accurate already, and how cycling has just gone insane. Check out more on this episode of Fun Analysis. This video on fun is brought to you by our viewers, supporters, members, and also in partnership with the following. Take on the decode season with Animark. FTC teams can discover great components such as Animark's 3-inch mechanum wheels, programmable servos, sensors that detect distance, color, orientation, and many more solutions for your team. Find this and more at Animark.com and count on Animark for the reliable service that teams expect. True competitors know that every second counts. That's why Kettering University challenges you to dive in right away as a first-year student. Participating in robotics programs helps Kettering students secure a valuable co-op. Whatever your interest, Kettering gives you more space to work faster and win faster. Learn more at kettering.edu slash first. The match we're going to be taking a look at is the final match of the Australian National Championship. On the red alliance, we've got team 26000 Theseus and 1111. 48 Barker Greybacks, and on the blue lines we've got 1430 Blue Bot Builders and 23636 Pimple Bees. And what we're going to want to take a look at is how effective Theseus's intake and shooter are, and how the Red Alliance attempts to counteract that with some extremely impressive def defense. Starting off in Autonomous, we're going to see Theseus post up some inc incredible scores, almost an 18 artifact auto just from themselves. We're going to have, see them have an impressive far long, launch zone shooter, while Blue Bot Builders goes from the closed zone. And this gives Theseus a really strong advantage in terms of cycles, because their cycles are going to be significantly faster, because they just quickly shoot those artifacts from that far launch zone, go intake them from the spike, and then go intake, and shoot them, and go intake another. We can see that at 10 seconds left, they've already shot two sets of artifacts and are intaking and getting ready for another. They're about to open the gate. It seems like every cycle we see with Theseus in this autonomous section, we feel like it's going to be their last, and then they go in for another. Here, we see them trust their intake, being able to intake from a clump of artifacts, which is super impressive in terms of the vectoring and how, how consistent their autonomous was at Australian National Championship. Once we watch, we'll see them get three artifacts, no matter what order, order the artifacts are in. And the next thing I want to point out is how consistent their shooter is. If you watch where in the goal that the shots are landing, they're almost always landing at that same spot, slightly bottom, middle to the right. It's circled on the screen and it seems that they've done this to reduce the amount of bounce outs. And I think that's something that teams can really take inspiration from is not necessarily shooting from for the center of the goal to actually optimize the goal, the position which you're tracking through your software or hardware. And that can lead to much more consistent shots. We see this with Theseus with almost all of their shots are going near that area. And once again, we're going to see their intake being able to intake artifacts no matter what order they're in, which is super impressive. And they're still shooting from that same spot. Again, with six seconds left, they're going to go for another cycle, which is super impressive because considering like how little time there is in Thomas to be able to go for almost uh, six cycles is crazy. Now in Talia, what we're going to notice is both Theseus and Blue Bot Builders, they have a really purposeful approach to the game. Theseus, we're going to see them immediately try to reset their turret through the corner of the field and then go into those far long zone cycles, while um, Blue Bot Builders is sort of going to alternate between shooting and playing defense. They get off to a start by playing defense while Theseus' teammate, Barker Greybacks, opens the gate. And I think that teams having a really good strategy in how to open up Talia and sort of get into a rhythm is really important and at a high level because we can see it really impacts the flow of this game. Uh, next, what we're going to see is after Theseus is ready to start their fall lungs and cycles, Blue Bot Builders has gone to the human player zone and is about to go over and push Theseus after they've already intake. We can see that Blue Bot Builders is making defense a natural part of their cycle. It's not something they're doing sort of out of the way to do it. They're going to intake, playing defense, and then scoring their artifacts. And I think teams can really take inspiration in not really playing just defense or just offense. Having a more diverse view to the game is super key. We're going to see this play out here where Blue Hot Builders pushes out Theseus up that far long zone while they're shooting. And now Theseus is sort of gonna get ready to do their far long zone cycles while Blue Hot Builders, now this time they're going to shoot and they're gonna push out, bar push Barker Greybacks while they're doing 
they are short zone cycles. This shows how blue up builders in one possession, they sort of intake from the human player zone, play defense on Theseus, play defense on their alliance partner, and then go to score. And I think those type of cycles where you're doing a lot of defense and a lot of scoring are really impressive. They're gonna once again try to go hit Theseus, but Theseus's shooter is just so fast and consistent that I'm super amazed that they're able to get their shots off. They shot them almost right before Blue Bot Builders came by. Once again, Blue Bot Builders tries to push off Theseus, but they're able to get those shots off. And I think teams having this rapid fire shooter is gonna be really key at avoiding defense. If your shooter takes, say, uh, one, one to two seconds to shoot all three artifacts, it's you're more susceptible def to defense as well as having shorter cycle times. If you've got something in that 0.5 second range or even lower, you're looking at a very fast uh, recycle time for your shooter, which can which can be super good for avoiding defense. Now what we're gonna see is Blue Bot Builders is gonna open their, their alliance's gate, which will lead Theseus to sort of get into a nice rhythm of cycling to the Farlon zone because of how many artifacts there are in that secret tunnel human player area. They're cycling really quick, getting those shots off so quick rapid fire and hitting almost all of them. Blue Bot Builders recognizes that they're in this rhythm and they try and disrupt this flow by sort of pushing them out of that human player zone and forcing them to go around, which does mess up their cycles. And I think that's really impressively played by Blue Bot Builders. And something that teams should definitely take a look into is that if a team is really consistently cycling, as we just saw um, Theseus do from this range, it, it's gonna be best to sort of disrupt that cycle by sort of getting in their way. Because as teams sort of fill into the cycle, their driving gets more, their driving gets a lot easier, they get into a flow, they get into a rhythm, but by Blue Bubble is disrupting this, it sort of messes them up. And they're kind of making a very high impact on this game without scoring that many artifacts. Now, the next thing I'd like to highlight is in past, We've seen matches where that short launch zone is super congested. We've got four robots, they're hitting each other, there's so much going on. But in this, due to Theseus' super effective far launch and shooter, and Blue Bot Builders having a really purposeful desire to sort of mess up Theseus' shooter, we're seeing that the far launch zone is almost more congested than that short launch zone. And I think the reason for this is that it's gonna come down to how effective your shooters are. If, you, if your shooters are better at close range, we're gonna see more robots uh, in that close range. And I think if, if there's more robots which are more far zone shooters, that far zone is a really small area. And just driving back and forth can lead you to be really susceptible to defense. And I think going around or trying to make your way out of those defensive situations like we've seen Theseus do a lot of matches is something that teams can really take away from them. We're gonna see once again more interactions and contact between Theseus and Blue Bot Builders. Theseus is getting ready to get into a nice cycle. Blue Bot Builders sort of gets in their way. They're ready to push them out of that Farlon zone, but they're also at the same time doing a similar thing, thing to Barker Greybacks. And that's, we're gonna see them sort of drive back and forth between this area as Theseus intakes uh, Blue Bot Builders tries to push them. I think this is actually a very risky position for Blue Bot Builders to be in because they're very close to pushing Theseus into that their own secret tunnel zone, which would be a penalty. And I think they almost do can uh, by touching the artifact, which causes a penalty. And I think that's being a little aware of these risky situations for penalties is going to be key at a high level too. We're going to see the penalty flag be waved. Theseus going to get more shots off, but Blue Bot Builders pushes them, actually succeeds in pushing them off course, which causes their artifacts to shoot into the stands. And... Blue Bot Builders immediately goes to intake. And I think that's once again really impressive. They're not just playing defense. They they just they push Theseus out, which caused them to miss their shots, and simultaneously intake and went to score their next artifacts. Now, since uh, Blue Bot Builders is doing a bit of scoring, the Theseus drivers are really smart and they see a bit of an opening here to really pull away in the game where there's so many artifacts in that human player zone and that secret tunnel zone that if they start cycling, it's gonna be really hard for Blue Bot Builders or the, the Blue Alliance in general to disrupt their flow because um, there's also scoring. So we're gonna see DCS quickly intake from that human player zone and quickly shoot them, almost leaving no time for defense to be played. Uh, Blue Bot Builders opens the gate, which actually uh, gives more artifacts for Theseus to play. And they kind of recognize that, okay, Theseus is doing this, let's try and stop them. And we're gonna see that they're gonna hit Theseus. Theseus is gonna try to go around, but Blue Bot Builders does a really good job of sort of closing them off from that area. And once again, this center area is completely unprotected. All this closing work is, is completely fine by Blue Bot Builders. And 
Theseus tries to go to the opposite area where there's a lot of artifacts, and Booba Builder still does a really good job of turning around and pushing them out of that area. And I think that's an amazing defensive possession from Booba Builders. They sort of completely close off this area of samples, and despite Theseus doing so good in terms of scoring, they're kind of limiting them while not scoring that much as well. Now, we're going to see this continue to play out where there's a lot of congestion in that middle area and so many artifacts in that bottom corner as the gate opens out. Now, uh, Theseus is going to continue doing their amazing Far Lonesome Cycles. Once again, it's super consistent, always aiming for that same spot. And I think teams in developing their shooters to be really accurate, they should also consider the software side and where they're aiming the goal again. Now, what we're going to see here is that there's 17 seconds left and all the robots are in that short launch zone except for Theseus. And Theseus' drivers do an amazing job of recognizing the time left and sort of capitalizing and doing as many cycles as, we, as they can. Let's watch and see how many cycles they're able to do in these 17 seconds. So, they just shot a few, they go to get three more from the human player, they go to the far launch zone almost immediately, bam, there's the rapid fire shots. 11 seconds left, they get three, they shoot them off, seven seconds, they get another cycle, they get a third cycle down in three in 14 seconds. At the three second mark, that's when they go, go to do their end game and park. And I think a lot of teams we've seen this year, they're sort of going to park in maybe 10 seconds to give them some leeway. But Theseus does a masterful job of knowing the clock, which I think a lot of drivers should definitely learn from. And by knowing the clock, they're able to maximize the amount of cycles. They're, they're up 50 points right now, but they're playing like they're down a cycle the whole game. They're not letting up in their pursuit of those far and cycles. And I think teams, even if they're up a lot in matches, should reflect that mentality. And as we see in that last second, Theseus does get that final final park with Barker Greybacks, and that sort of sets them off to win this game and send off to the World Championship by being the winning alliance captain at the Australia Championship. And I think going into Worlds for, th for these Australian teams and so many other regional championship events which we're left to see, it's going to be so exciting to see how teams are going to approach defense if teams can make a continue to make a similar impact on defense as we saw see top level offensive teams like DCS play this season. Thank you for watching this episode of Analysis. Let us know in the comments if you think the defensive or offensive oriented strategy is better suited for Decode and make sure to like and subscribe for more content like this. Catch you next time. This is Rahul reporting on the Fun Robotics Network. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to stay up to date on future fun videos. True competitors know that every second counts. That's why Kettering University challenges you to dive in right away as a first-year student. Participating in robotics programs helps Kettering students secure a valuable co-op. Whatever your interests, Kettering gives you more space to work faster and win faster. Learn more at kettering.edu slash first. Take on the Decode season with Annie Mark. FTC teams can discover great components such as Animark's 3-inch mechanum wheels, programmable servos, sensors that detect distance, color, orientation, and many more solutions for your team. Find this and more at Animark.com and count on Animark for the reliable service that teams expect.